what is going on guys you yeah, i know who it is it is your boy the giant dude here and today we're doing a bit of a different type of video it's just going to be me in front of the camera talking to you guys about aiming i asked you guys on youtube uh if you have any questions for me when it comes to aiming and uh today's video we're going to be going over that so without further ado let's get right into it so my first question comes from assaulted nailed i think that's how you say it he asked generally can you be insane in any mouse pad i'm pretty sure you once meant to say on any mouse pad or are there different skill ceilings in cheaper versus better mouse pads or soft versus hard which is a very good question and it co comes down to one of those things that if you have a nice mouse pad it's going to be easier to learn on but that doesn't mean that a really good aimer can't play on a cheap mouse pad it all comes down to mouse control personal preference i know when i first started out with uh aiming i had like a 13 dollar uh walmart mouse pad that's what i practiced on and that's what i played on and that mouse pad actually carried me over to uh global and i think when it comes down to the equipment that you use you want to get good equipment you want to get whatever you can afford that's like the best you know what i'm saying like don't go stupid crazy you don't have to spend you know 200 dollars on a mouse pad but getting yourself a good 30 40 dollar mouse pad is going to go a long way and they last a lot longer so that's my answer to uh that question so uh Rizal asks, how can people consistently target switch to a player that is off screen across all games? I actually do this a lot and smooth aiming scenarios, mainly for games like Apex and Overox using Kovacs and Aim Labs. Just think it's an interesting topic I should bring up. Now, when people are doing those crazy off target flicks, like off screen flicks, I could do it and most of the time it's just reaction based you react to something you hear or something like an audio cue or you look at your mini map and you see oh there's a red dot there i'm gonna you know target switch over to them but that's not like a practical way to aim if you get what i'm saying you really want to aim at targets on your screen that's the difference you want to aim at targets on your screen because those off screen flick shots, yeah, they're cool and fancy, but they're not very practical. So I wouldn't suggest anybody like going for them per se, but let them come naturally. You, when they come naturally, those are like the best flick shots, off screen flick shots. And, um, but don't practice for it. It's going, it's going to ruin your aim and you're going to find yourself frustrated because you're not going to be able to do it all the time. Like, like I said, some people can do it, you know, because they just go for it. That's all they do but it's not a practical way to uh, aim, in my personal opinion. Uh, next question is from John Marvin. How would you develop smooth aim and mouse control? And what are some of the things you can do on the pad to help with mouse control? That is like one of my most common questions I get. How do you practice mouse control? And a lot of the times when people are talking about mouse control, they get it confused with being able to flick and you know stay on target while you flick or like you flick to a target and then that's just it you, you know you flicked onto that target that's it no your mouse control comes down to you controlling the mouse whether you're flicking whether you're tracking whether you are doing advanced movement like your mouse is nice and smooth and the best way to practice that i would say is just aim train pretty much if i don't personally aim train that much anymore but for you guys that are new to uh gaming and maybe not even new to gaming but new to mouse and keyboard and you want to build up that dexterity in your arm your wrist your fingers that was what it comes down to and i would say most people that start out with a mouse and keyboard when it comes to like popular mouse scripts is just to use just a palm grip just use just use a regular palm grip and that's going to help you with the mouse control because it's a relaxed grip and it's just going to help you out when it comes to building up that dexterity with a uh mouse now one of my buddies baronox he actually uses a hybrid of the palm grip which is pretty much like almost like a claw grip almost but he has his fingers his pinky and his index finger on the side of the mouse like this and he's picking it up putting it down and that's pretty much is what's going to help you when it comes to 
building that dexterity when it comes to uh, mouse control. Me personally, if you guys are wanting my personal grip is a fingertip grip kinda. I, I, I grip the mouse like this. This is what I'm comfortable with. And what helps me when it comes to mouse control and mouse aiming is a technique that I know uh, a famous, you guys know of him, Rila, he actually uses this. He, what happens is you have your hands like this and you have your pinky finger and it kind of touches the mouse pad along with your index finger. It, it touches the mouse pad and your thumb is overhanging, right? I don't know if you guys can see that, but your, my, my thumb is overhanging. So it, it's kind of like this. And what happens is when I put my mouse on, on my mouse pad, my the mouse pad makes contact with these two fingers right and my thumb so i apply pressure to it pushing down a little further in order to you know stop and really control my mouse guys when it comes to aiming and when it comes to uh having that mouse control that you all are looking for it is basically down to your grip style and how to make it and your own and how to basically build up the dexterity and strength when it comes to aiming because i could tell you right now when you're tracking targets all day you're going to get fatigued it's 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 a lot of uh strain on your shoulder your arms you all, you're working all those muscles when it comes to aiming on a mouse and keyboard and it's one of those things that you just have to play around with it and just pretty much practice be consciously aware of how am I controlling that mouse? Another thing that helps me with mouse control is a variety of different sensitivities. I have played on a hundred meter, or not a hundred meter, a hundred centimeter 360, and I played on a 12 centimeter 360. And that's pretty much what I did over the course of the past couple of years, mainly for videos. But what that has taught me is mouse control at any sensitivity. At a higher sensitivity, I noticed I'm using more wrist than arm. On a lower sensitivity, I'm using a lot of arm and a lot, less wrist like that's what it's going to help you out when it comes to controlling your mouse and how you are going to build up that dexterity pretty much like a lot of people say just stay on one sensitivity stick with it and i am actually against that idea because you're not going to build mouse control any good aimer that has studied aim theory or it's just a good aimer overall is going to tell you that sticking to one sensitivity is you know not just not it when you're trying to learn right you're going to want to develop mouse control having higher and lower sensitivities you're going to suck at it but then you will get that mouse control and then you will have that preferred sensitivity after you use the range of sensitivities that you like to play at and that is going to be what's comfortable for you right and you're going to have amazing control when it comes to that sensitivity so um there's that. My next question is from Pablo LeBron. Different types of mouse grips and how you can progress with the grip. Basically, it comes down to personal preference, man. I covered the grip that I use, which was this one. There's the, the palm grip, right? Where your palm is on the mouse. There's a fingertip grip. For beginners, I highly recommend the palm grip. It's going to help you with the most mouse control. It's the most relaxed and then advanced and try out all the different grips, man. There's some people that have weird grips. I know uh, somebody that plays with a grip like this, right? They have one hand on the side and then their their, their side fingers like this. So they use these two fingers. Like it, it, it's just your grip. It, it, you make it your own. However you feel comfortable gripping the mouse, that's your grip, okay? Don't try to copy other people's grip. Find a grip that you like and it's all your personal preference, okay? Um, let's see, what else do we have here? We got Ray Ray who asked how to train smooth aim on mouse and keyboard. I noticed I stutter a lot during tracking. Basically, I think I'll be moving the mouse but it's not moving. Then I try to compensate, uh, overcompensate my perceived lack of movement and I overshoot. Also, is there a specific, there a particular surface that will help with better tracking. We kind of covered that. A lot of these questions are the same, but basically you have to find a range of mouse pads you like that have different grips. I played on a gl glass mouse pad and I played on a low friction mouse pad, cloth mouse pad, and a high friction uh, cloth mouse pad. And what I prefer is something in the middle. But basically, when you're playing and trying out different mouse pads, 
I use different sensitivities on different mouse pads, right? And I have, or I have a mouse pad somewhere, which is right here, okay? This is my glass mouse pad. And I like this mouse pad, I really do. It really helps out with tracking, but it is not a beginner mouse pad. This is someone that has, this mouse pad I would recommend to someone that has mastered their uh, control of their mouse, right? They mastered uh, their mouse control, right? This is the sky pad. I played on this a lot. I love that. Another mouse pad over here. And this is a huge, huge mouse pad, man. This is my razor mouse pad. Look how big this mouse pad is. This mouse pad has a little bit uh, of a faster surface than my glorious mouse pad, right? So when I'm playing on my razor mouse pad, I like to have a sensitivity of around a five or no, a four, a four at 800 DPI, 1.21 monitor coefficient. But when I switch over to my glorious mouse pad, um, I like to have a sensitivity of around a five because this one has a little bit more friction and I can control the sensitivity at a higher, uh, I can control a higher sensitivity. So basically when it comes to your mouse pad, it takes time to experiment with like the different um, frictions on the mouse pad. Like the sky pad, I can play on a super low sensitivity, but on the sky pad, it's really small. So I have to raise the sensitivity up a little bit and basically use that for like a wrist aim style. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of the difference um, between mouse pads. I like big mouse pads and I like a medium to high friction mouse pad. That's why I know where my sensitivity is at. I can adjust for it. And that's pretty much when it comes to mouse pads. Find something that you like, like you're not gonna have play at a five sensitivity at 800 DPI on a high friction mouse pad. Maybe you are, but like for me personally, at a high friction mouse pad, I like a low or a low friction mouse pad. I like a higher sensitivity or a lower sensitivity. So low friction basically makes where it's like a smooth mouse pad. I have a lower sensitivity because I can control it a lot better. A high friction mouse pad, I have a higher sensitivity because there's more friction, more stopping power that's going to be helping me. So that's kind of um, the thought process behind that. Uh, this is a really good one. TSH H or TSH Ace ask, Tracking and anticipation of the enemy movement while tracking. A lot of people ask me, how do you switch between targets real fast? How do you track an enemy when they're moving left and right? Pretty much what you guys have to do, it's just like basically me telling my arm, hi, I'm waving to you guys, right? I'm waving. My brain just knows that my arm has to do this movement. When I see someone do that movement on the screen, I do that with my arm pretty much. It's, it's second nature. So you pretty much don't have to think about it. You have to, your eyes are seeing, your hand is doing. That's pretty much all I have to say when it comes to that. When you are tracking an enemy, don't think too much on, oh, this enemy is gonna jump left or right. No, you're reacting to what they're doing. Don't think about, oh, this enemy is gonna jump. Is he gonna jump? I'm waiting for him to jump. Like that's just clouding your brain with useless information. You, you're you anticipating it, but you're not reacting to it. You're waiting for it to happen. And that is what's going to slow you down. Think of it as, oh, red light, green light. Red light, I go. Or watch, well, red light, I go. Red light, I stop. Green light, I go. You're not really, that's just something that you know, right? When I'm tracking an enemy, I'm not thinking, oh, is this person going to strafe left and right? No, I'm reacting to what they're doing. So that's what helps me out a lot. Don't think about or anticipating the enemy's movement. You're more just reacting to it. And that's going to help you out in the long run. So there's that. Uh, Inspire, how has your progress been? with mouse excel been my progress has been great man i pretty much can use mouse excel and just raw uh raw aim pretty much i figured out with myself is that i'm a better aimer when i use both right so like one day i could be using raw excel and then or yeah raw excel and then the next day i can be doing using raw aim 
and that just comes down to like a different method of uh, mouse control. I actually thought I hit a skill ceiling when it comes to raw aim, but after using raw Excel, it has actually push, pushed my raw aim to a higher level. And I think that for now I'm using raw aim and my aim is just absolutely nuts. But if I feel like I'm hitting that skill gap again, I switch over to raw mouse Excel and then switch back and my skill level just keeps improving. So there's that. Uh, how do I not freak out with my aim? Basically you have to remain calm. That's that. Remain calm, don't overthink about it. Don't think about aiming, think about how to get to cover, think about your next move, think about where the enemies are at. Pretty much don't cloud your mind with, oh, I need to aim and stick onto this target. That's not gonna help you out in the long run. Um, reactive tracking, uh, escape gulag. Reactive tracking, dealing with loss of awareness on lower sense. Now we talked about reactive tracking, um, dealing with loss of awareness on lower sense. So I think what he means by that is, basically on a lower sense you had to move around more and you lose your target i mean you just got to get used to it practice with that lower sense uh like i said you could play at a low sense and do extremely well it's basically just what you prefer and it depends on what game you are playing okay so most games a medium to lower sense is better. Everybody's going to tell you that medium to lower sense is better. There are some players that prefer a higher sense. Nothing wrong with that. Strafe, a really good aimer, plays on a a little bit higher sense. I think he plays like on a thirty centimeter, thirty four centimeter, three sixty, something like that, right? I play on a forty three uh, centimeter, three sixty. But then again, he doesn't keep the same sensitivity because he's always switching my. I, that man's always switching my mouse pads every time I go into a stream. It's a different mouse pads or a different mice. But I mean, that's what happens, but you could do that and still maintain your aim when you have good mouse control. There's that. So guys, that is it for the video. This is a really long video today, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. Always remember to stay blessed and humble, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Peace.